legends, heroes, and poopy heads. Welcome to the Omni Flash channel, where Omni Flash will take gaming to the next level. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Omni Flash, and I am your guide to Perfect World Mobile. Welcome to the Ultimate Soul Hunter Guide. Lots of people have been asking me, should I play a Soul Hunter? And the answer is a definite yes. The Soul Hunter is one of the best free-to-play DPS classes that you will want to play in Perfect World Mobile. The other class that I usually suggest if someone wants to be a damage dealer who wants mobility, who wants utility in Realm War, in Guild League, and in Territory War, they would be an archer. However, this new class has all of that and some other tricks up its sleeve. Now you know how awesome a Soul Hunter is. You might be wondering, should I be Sage? Should I be Demon? We'll be going over that right about now. If this video has helped you, please like, subscribe, smash that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. And comment below to be entered to win a $25 iTunes or Google Play gift card on January 15th, 2021. Let's start off talking about the PvE size. That's how much damage you do in dungeons against bosses and stuff. PvP we'll talk about later, which will be the Demon Path. The Sage Path gives you insane amounts of damage, even if you don't have but a couple of skills. When I class change, this character used to be an archer, then I class change to an assassin, now a soul hunter. So I know how much damage this exact character does as an archer assassin and a soul hunter and i have to say the soul hunter out damages my archer and way out damages assassin in pve all right so assassin will out damage even a demon soul hunter okay so assassins so this game is very balanced there are certain classes that just does things better in certain areas there's not one overpowered class. So if you want, if you like to just feel good in PVE, in dungeons, you just you just feel like a god in dungeons. Soul Hunter is the way to go. Even without a, without a lot of skills, I was out damaging professional archers, professional wizards, professional vulpines, even without many skills. It's taken me a little bit of time in order to get all the skills, but <clears throat> what you will see is that the sage the sage class has a ton of skills that will give you extra souls all right so eventually you'll be getting a ton of souls and you won't have to worry about not having the souls to empower your attacks now for the sage skills you can actually put 10 points into soul smash 10 points into soul pounding and uh actually i think maybe just put zero points into the Aegis boost or, or just one point. There's not really that much of a boost. Reign of Souls is super strong. I do recommend that you get Reign of Souls, put 15 points into that. And then maybe just five points into Soul Pounding, five points into Soul Smash. If you have Reigns of Souls. Now next on, uh, we have Soul Breaker. I don't have that skill, but if I did, I would put 10 points into Soul Breaker. I will put 10 points into Endless Torture. You want to use Torment of Souls as a finisher move if you have Endless Torture. This will actually allow you to cast Torment of Souls a lot faster, increasing your DPS. If I had Soul Breaker, I would have actually put 10 points into Soul Breaker and 10 points into Endless Torture. I may have just left one point into Life Leech. But since I needed 20 points, I had to split 20 points in order to get to Sage 3. You can get Life Leech if you if you are dying a lot, but I prioritize damage over the Life Leech. Now the Soul Chain is amazing. It will speed you up, it will increase the damage you do to bosses, which is one of the most important parts of PvE. And it will also decrease the damage that the boss gives to you. So before using your very powerful attacks, you want to make sure 
that the boss is chained. Once you chain an enemy, you also gain a speed boost, which is great in dungeons to help you dodge those massive AoE attacks, which can one-shot you. The Soul Cleaver is a source of insane amounts of damage, so very similar to what Decapitate does for an assassin, the Soul Cleaver does a ton of damage. It is a chi skill, so you're going to need two bars of chi in order to Soul Cleaver. If I have enough chi, I always use Soul Cleaver as soon as it comes up, every time, because it can also regenerate my number of souls, which will increase my damage overall. To boost the chance that Soul Cleaver will actually give you a soul, do make sure to get Soul Recast up to level 10. Now Revival Master, I don't think is that important. It will help boost your Revive Soul. This is one thing that Soul Hunters can do that Archers cannot. And they can actually cast Revive Soul on the Cleric, all right? So normally your Cleric is gonna revive your team. Now, who is going to revive the cleric? Now, what's awesome about this skill, you will actually, you will have to target. Use revive soul, target your cleric, and you can use that on them. It will last for 10 minutes. So you do, if the dungeon takes more than 10 minutes, just cast revive soul on your cleric once every 10 minutes. And even if you are dead, even if you are dead, the cleric, will have a chance to revive with 30% HP. It's incredible. However, it does not stack with the red book. So if you have the red book, it actually, uh, it's not useful. So if your cleric has a red book, you will want to use revive souls on someone in your party who does not have a red book. All right, so I recommend you want 10 points into soul chain, 15 points if it's possible, soul chain master, 15 points in the soul generator so you can generate souls a lot faster. 15 points in the storm of souls. I don't have enough points for that. Now, let's look at the rare skills. Life container, I would put 10 points into it if you have that rare skill. Song of hell, 15 points if you have that rare skill. And if you have assault chain, this is a PVE skill, also very strong. 15 points into it if you have that rare skill. Now, like I said, I would recommend that you start off as Sage. And I'm gonna link a video below which will show you how to make rare skills. So eventually, you're gonna be making a ton of rare skills, which will, any of those demon rare skills that you don't, you're not able to sell, you can't sell, just use them for yourself. And so eventually, you're gonna have a set of Sage and demon skills. As a Sage Soul Hunter, it's all about damage. As a Demon Soul Hunter, it's all about utility. Because as a Sage Soul Hunter, you can only fear one person. As a Demon Soul Hunter, your fear becomes an AoE fear. That AoE fear can actually fear off an entire group of enemies off of a point in Guild League, helping you take over. And it is absolutely great in territory war where you can fear your enemy team away from their ballistas, making their ballistas blow up. This can save your city and give your guild the win over your enemies. Soul Hunters are incredible in team, in team fights, okay? They aren't as strong in Realm War because they don't have as much burst as assassins do. However, in massive team fights, soul hunters, in my opinion, are better than assassins. All right, so we're done with the PVE section. We're going into PVP, and that is the demon soul hunter. What we have is that you gain souls whenever you use a chi skill. So it's very important to think of ways of gaining chi so that you can have souls which will massively increase the damage output. So be sure to have pills that gives you chi. Be sure to look for a good sigil, a good Arkasar sigil, a good sigil that can give you chi as well. That will make you a lot stronger, get you a lot of souls. Also, if you use Soul Cleaver and you eliminate somebody, you will actually refresh Soul Cleaver and get 100 chi. 
The Demon Soul Hunter also has insane burst damage with their Demon Soul Arrows. Their Soul Arrows, while empowered by a soul, they can do each time they stack up to five times. You can have up to five souls. It does 50% more damage for each empowered Soul Arrow that you use. Soul Step is a signature Soul Hunter skill which makes you invisible and run faster. So you can use Superior Step to give you one extra second. I think that's kind of a waste, but I needed to have 20 points in order to get to Demon Skill 3. So I have to put 10 points into Superior Step. If I had if I had the rare skill Soul Impact, I would instead put 15 points into Soul Impact. And probably 5 points into Soul Bound Lock. I don't like bouncy container too much it will actually force you to cast soul container when you are down to 20 percent hp i like to be able to control when i use my soul container also for the uh, demon one skills as for the demon one skill soul pool is good if your enemies are kiting you and you can't catch up with them that would decrease their movement speed by 50 percent deadly soul is good for healing if you have if your enemies have a cleric this would decrease their healing at let's say at 10 points it decreases their healing by 25 percent i like those the pugnacity boost buff isn't that great even at max at 10 at 10 points it doesn't do that much go ahead and put a couple points in there if you are capped i do put a lot of power a lot of points into soul reap if you have that rare skill the put 15 points in that soul reap just does true damage it ignores defense very very good skill so try to get soul reap put 15 points in soul reap put 15 points into soul impact if you are able to get that and uh, you will be able to put lesser points into superior step and lesser points into soul pool and lesser points into pugnacity boost once you have the rare skills of course soul bound lock soul bound lock you are going to keep 10 points in it you can increase it up to 15 points if you have more points later on so yeah it's possible maybe put maybe put 15 points into soul bound lock at this moment and five points into superior step you could also change that now reflection container is interesting i don't think you will use your container that much so its usability isn't that great just put uh put 10 points into it put 10 points in the reflection container if you have it now the god slayer slash that's something different that's the soul cleaver skill increases damage of your soul cleaver 100 percent if you get that skill that is a very good skill put 15 points into the god slayer slash shatter soul also increases your soul cleaver damage definitely put 15 points into that if you have put at least 10 put 15 if possible hell scream is also really really good it will increase the length of your fear so at, at the moment it's two and a half seconds so you can actually increase your health screen up to plus 15 to make it 2.8 seconds now this is an aoe an aoe fear so you will be fearing like 10 people if there's like 10 people on a spot in guild league and it is a massive massive aoe and they will be able to do nothing for 2.8 seconds all right so soul bash and soul cry soul bash will actually increase the damage done by your requiem of souls and soul cry will make it so that your requiem of souls also roots and seals your enemies so so regular souls becomes a super powerful crowd control skill as well and you will want to uh, make sure to get some root and silence into your gears also if you have uh, go to guild training and also train some into silence and root uh, so that your enemies don't resist your silence and root from requiem of souls tortured soul skill will actually give uh, up to like 15 percent chance of a 0.1 second stun so it would be better if it was a longer stun but since it's only 0.1 seconds and there's only like even at level 10 only 10 percent chance it's 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 not that useful i would put one point into that trio locks is really nice i will put 10 points into trio lock as for sacred books i really like sunset tales it gives you three percent crit that's worth it also uh I, I do like the creator the creator is the number one book try to get the creator as quickly as possible does a ton of damage you will see a huge damage increase 
Appetites of Spring is a nice mid-level book. It pairs with Hydra, so if you have Appetites of Spring, you will want to use the Hydra Numa card. Also like uh, Rouge and Red Lips, a very nice free-to-play book. So I like that. It's a very good book. Also, uh, you can use Tears of Red, but you don't have to since you have the revivability. I could, you could change that to Poets Museum to keep yourself from being stunned. You can use Mountain Pass to increase your chi generation so that you will gain souls more quickly. Hidden Dragon will probably be a book that I will be working on next just so that I can keep my enemies from healing. Even though I have an anti-heal skill, I do want to make sure that they don't have as much sustain from their clerics. So in summary, the Soul Hunter is absolutely amazing even without many skill books. When I started out as a Soul Hunter, I didn't have many skills and I still out damage archers, wizards, vulpines. I clearly out damage assassins. Assassins don't, aren't that great at doing damage. And you do it from a pretty safe distance from about a blade master distance so that you can dodge skills pretty easily also you get that boost running speed when you when you chain the enemies this will allow you to dodge so making soul hunter very very strong they also have soul container which is a three second invulnerability prevents you from dying soul hunters can go invisible they have a revive skill just absolutely amazing i can go on and on you should try it out yourself if this video has helped you if you like this video please like subscribe smash that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out and comment below to be entered to win a 25 dollars itunes or google play gift card january 15 2021 thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video oh.